Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to add yet another cooler to Season 2 of the Cooler League. <laughs> Without further ado, let's have a look at what the cooler that we'll be adding in today's video. So today we'll be adding the Noctua NHD1 2L Chromax Black. Now this is going to be an interesting cooler to add because in season two so far, I've mostly added uh, what I would say are mostly larger coolers that have got two fans um, or AIOs that have got basically a lot more cooling potential because they've got more fan power. Uh, liquid or whatever. This is a little bit of a step back in terms of what you would say is a smaller, more traditional cooler. It's only got the one fan. Of course it's made by Noctua, so it's well engineered and it's got plenty of heat pipes. So it'll be interesting to see if a cooler of this size with only one fan can compete with some of the bigger boys that we've got um, in the league this season. So as always in these videos, uh, the first one we'll do is we'll go through the install. I will give you my thoughts on the install, um, see how easy or how bad it was, etc, etc. Then I will go through the testing results in terms of walking through the temperatures, everything else, lead position, all that kind of good stuff. And then at the end, I'll give you my final thoughts and conclusion. Without further ado, let's get the install montage rolled and then I'll give you my thoughts on the install. First thing before I start the install I want to mention is the quality of the Noctua in install instructions is amazing. It's really well laid out. So the around, it's one of the old black plates where you got to do different positions depending on the intel. For this, it's triangles. So on the screws, there are triangles, and you've got to position those triangles in the right place. For 1700, it's position two, which is the furthest away. Pretty standard cooler installation to be perfectly honest for um, an Intel CPU for seven, socket 1700. Um, you have a back plate which have prongs that come through. Then you have these little plastic shims which you basically help retain those uh, prongs that poke through. 
then you put bars on the side, you screw those on, you put the cooler on and you screw it on. Pretty bog standard, um, nothing radically different um, than other coolers we've gone through in the cooler this season. So I'd say installation wise, not too easy, not the most difficult, pretty much down the middle of the road. Not that difficult at all. So all in all, I would say it's a pretty good install. Um, yeah, the only thing I'd say about it, there's one thing that does make the install a little bit easier, is with the one fan, you've got one cable to go to one header, you've got no splitters, you've got no requirement for any pack because there's no RGB, it's a Chromax Black, so there's no lighting at all. So from that extent, you could say it's a bit easier because the cables are a lot easier to manage. You've just got one cable going to the fan header on the motherboard. All right, without further ado, let's get on to the results. So base temps. The base temp was 24 Celsius for the uh, Noctua NHD12L, Chromax, black. Um, that doesn't put it in a, such a great position. Now, I think that is because the Noctua fans that they send with the coolers don't have a great RP image. They don't go too high. So as, as a base cooler, it's really at the base temperature relying on the heat sink to be able to cool it. Um, so not awful by any means and not the worst, but still keep in mind that when you first turn the computer on, the temperatures might be a little bit higher than expected at idle, but I wouldn't necessarily worry about that because when we look at base sound, the base sound is the lowest of them all. Again, because that fan on the cooler just is not spinning that much. So it's a bit of a trade-off. The base temperature is not that high, not that low, but then again, the fan noise is non-existent. So to be perfectly honest, with, when looking at idle, I'd rather have the fan speed very low in terms of that, because then if you're sitting there and you're doing other stuff while the computer's switched on, you're not gonna hear your CPU cooler, which is great. So the noise levels are gonna be pretty low. So Cinebench score. The Cinebench score we had was 27,324 which pretty much puts it around the main pack. You can see on the graph, we've still got that outlier of the Phantom Spirit, which I'm still contemplating whether I need to retest or not. Because all the other coolers, apart from the Frozen Note and the LSI 120D, tend to sort of go in this main pack. And you see that literally, if you look at the score the second is 27,381, and the Noctua cooler is 27,331. So I got the score wrong before. So therefore, it's not actually that different. There's only 50 points between it and the Cooler Master MA824 Stealth. So realistically, score-wise, it's performed very well in line pretty much with all the rest of the coolers in the Cooler League so far for Season 2. Mike's Temp. I think you've got to be realistic of the expectations of what I was expecting for the max temperature from this cooler. Um, it's a smaller cooler, it's only got one fan, so are you expecting the same kind of performance, say, out the cooler I mentioned just before, which is the MA824 Stealth, which is a huge cooler with two fans. So it's not going to get the temperatures that low, or it's not really going to compete with AIOs either. So if we look at where it's sat, it had a maximum temperature of 89 Celsius. That's still 11 degrees below um, throttling on the CPU. So in nowhere near is it risk. And keep in mind, uh, and you know, you'll hear other YouTubers say this, that Cinebench basically is maximizing the performance of CPU and, and hammering the CPU harder than any other workload that you would have generally in normal life. So this is basically the like the worst case scenario for any cooler, and it's still only hit 89 degrees over the long test. So realistically, I think you're pretty good with that. So I've got no qualms about the temperature performance of the cooler, especially considering the size. Max sound, you can see that the, uh, the cooler finished third, which is in line with what we were looking at before in terms of the bass sound, because your Noctua fans don't spin as fast, they more rely on the efficiency of the fans, so therefore they're generally gonna be quieter. Um, so that's keeping in mind the temperature that we had, the fact that it finished third in terms of the max sound is an excellent result. I think you've got to keep that in mind when looking at this cooler and saying shall purchase it. Scoring ranges. The scoring ranges haven't changed as before. They are as they have been since the start of season two and will be the same until we get to the end of season two. So here we have it. Where is it finished in the cooler table? It's finished a very respectable fourth. There are larger coolers. Uh, there are uh, AIOs that are falling behind it uh, and 
realistically, you know, the bass sound puts it in a great position. Everything else, it's performance-wise, temperature-wise, it's score, pretty much straight down the middle. It's in line with a lot of the other coolers. The price isn't prohibitive. You know, it's $99.90 on Amazon right now as filming this video. So it's not the most expensive cooler. Where it falls behind is, say, the Thermalright Peerless Assassin, which, you know, score, you know, score and um, uh, temperature-wise isn't that too, that much different than this cooler. Yet, because it's so much cheaper, it puts it in a much better spot. Even though it finished behind the Chrome Max a little bit, that bass sound has really helped it move up the table. Now here's where we're going to break down the analysis of the cooler. As you can see, it's still in fourth position with the score excluding the price with 22 points. You can see it just finishes below the M824 Stealth because, and realistically, I think that's a cooler we should be comparing it with because they're based, basically in the same price range. They're both around $100. Now, if we look at that, the M824 Stealth comes with two fans. It Score excluding price is 23 and the main reason behind that is if you look at the cooling difference between the MA824 Stealth and, say, the, the uh, NHD12L, the, the Stealth only reached 72 degrees Celsius max compared to the 89 degrees of the NHD12L. So when you look at that in terms of cost below the uh, Celsius, degree Celsius below 100, the MA824 Stealth is only $3.57 for every degree below 100. Whereas because the, the uh, Noctua Cooler finished on 89 degrees, it works out at $9.08 for every degree it's cooling below 100 Celsius. So because it's closer to the thermal limit of the CPU and it costs the same as the MA824 Stealth, Realistically, if you just looked at it up as a price to performance as a cooler, it does not hold up as well. Um, so just keep that in mind when comparing this to other coolers that are on the table. So, final conclusion time. This cooler is a very interesting cooler indeed. It's the quality of the engineering and the product is outstanding as you would expect from a knock to a product. If you look at the cooling performance, for the size of the cooler, it's excellent because, you know, it's still not thermal throttling for a cooler with only one fan. So would this cooler benefit from having an additional fan added? Absolutely it would. You know, the max temperature is 89 Celsius. If we stuck another, one, say, 120 knock to a black um, cooler uh, fan on the back, I'm sure that, it will, that that max temperature will go down substantially. I think the noise level would go up slightly, but I think the trade-off in terms of cooling performance compared to noise would be worth it at that point. But it, let's put that aside, and we didn't do that option because we test all coolers as they come out of the box and what is available in the box. There was no extra fan in the box, so we didn't test that way. So that aside, let's look at what this, what this cooler is. It's expensive at $100. For its size, does it perform really well? absolutely the whisper quietness of the cooler is just amazing and it, a cooler of that size handling a 12900k is just amazing i don't think a cooler any other cooler of the size would do it however if you just looked at it from poor, pure cooling performance and noise can say compared to the ma824 stealth then i've really got to say the ma824 stealth looks a better option however because they're the size of the MA824 self, you've got to look at whether it'll fit in some cases. And keep in mind that Cinebench taxes a CPU to its max. You've got to think, well, they're both around the same price. Am I going to overclock my CPU? No. Am I going to run it in stock? Am I going to be running any tasks that are going to tax the CPU to such an extent that Cinebench is? And if I've got a case where a large cooler like the MA824 Stealth doesn't fit, then does it become an option? Yes, it absolutely does. And I think that's really where it's going to fit in terms of its place in the market. Some people are going to buy it because it's Noctua and the engineering quality is amazing. The cooler is going to last forever, probably. The fan is going to last forever. Well, it won't, but it's going to last a long time. So from that point of view, there are going to be people who are just going to buy it for its Noctua. But I think it's genuinely got a place in the marketplace. 
If it, the cooling performance has been worse for its price, it would have been a definite no. But I think for me personally, do I recommend the cooler? I think I would recommend it in certain circumstances when it's for the right case and the right situation. All right, I hope you found that useful. Please don't forget to subscribe uh, before you leave. And if you do feel so inclined, please put a like on the video. Also, if you feel also inclined and you want to make a comment on the video in terms of asking a question, or if you've got any general feedback of any on the video itself, then please leave in the comment section down below. If you don't like the video, then please hit the dislike as well. Um, that helps me in terms of I can see the number of dislikes to help me try and improve the channel. But if you do hit a dislike, then please, if you can, leave a comment to understand why you can put the dislike and how I can improve. All right, that's all the YouTube stuff done. Um, I hope you found this helpful. And as always, take care.